What's going on, everybody? I'm Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers, and I am kind of excited today. Actually, I'm more than kind of excited. I'm really excited because we're starting a brand new video series on the channel today, and it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I just haven't had the time, and I recently finished up a multi-year contract with a client. Don't have anything lined up after that, so I am taking the time to build this project that I've been wanting to do, and I am taking you along for the ride, front row seat, ride or die, bitch. <laughs> the very first thing we gotta do here is with any project that we're gonna do is we need project management to kind of track the stuff that we're gonna do and know where we're at in this whole life cycle of getting this from idea to a production. And when it comes to project management, it's something that I really struggle with just getting all of my thoughts and ideas and tasks organized. But if you work over time, you'll work with some really good project managers and they're gonna make this look so easy. But we're gonna stumble through it, doing it my way. And the first thing we gotta do is decide how we're gonna track our project. And there are a ton of different applications and websites out there that let you do project management, things like uh, Jira or Confluence, uh, GitLab, Trello, bunch of others. There's also project management built into GitHub. And that's what I'm gonna use because one of the things I've learned throughout my career is that most project management software has like 50 or 60,000 different features that you're never gonna use. And it just makes them really cumbersome and difficult to use. I like GitHub projects because my code's gonna be in GitHub, so it makes sense to have my project there as well. It's a clean, simple interface that does just the bare minimum that I need it to do. You'll have my list of things to do or in the backlog, the list of things to do, the things in progress, and as I move my code through different stages of you know, creating the code, opening a pull request, merging it into the main branch. My status for those tasks will get updated in the project automatically. So I've already got a little bit of the project set up in GitHub. So let's go ahead and jump into that and then we'll finish that out. Over in GitHub, this is my main GitHub page for my organization. It may look a little different than yours because this is a GitHub organization versus my GitHub personal page. But the key things to notice here is we've got some repositories here. The ones that we're specifically interested in are the Trustified UI and the Trustified API. Those are the two repos that we're gonna be using to build out this application. And then, the topic for this video are the pro or is the project. So if we click on the projects tab, we have the project that I've already started here, our trustified.io application. And so when we open that up, we jump right into the Kanban view board and I've got columns here for the backlog, the to do, in progress and ready to deploy, followed by done. So the way that this is going to work is whenever I create a new issue, it's gonna be dropped into the backlog automatically. Whenever I'm ready to start working on it, uh, I'll drag that over in to do, so I know that that's the thing I need to be working on next. And then when I actually start writing that code, I'll move it over to in progress. Once I write that code and merge it into main, with the uh, pull request, it'll be marked as ready to deploy. So that's gonna trigger the deploy to our staging environment automatically, but I won't be doing automated deploys to the production branch. What I'll do is whenever I hit a specific point, I'll take everything that's in ready to deploy, create a release tag for that, and that will be 
um, what we deploy out to master or to the main branch out to production sorry it will already be in the main branch that's what we'll deploy to production via the release tag and that's when we'll mark it as done now some of these steps are already automated so if we go over here to workflows you can see whenever we select item added to project when an issue or a pull request is added it sets the status to backlog whenever an item is closed so whenever we have an issue or a pull request that's marked as closed, it sets the status to done, which we actually want to change that to ready to deploy. Otherwise, what I just said was a lie. And same thing with merging a pull request. Whenever we merge a pull request in, that's going to change our status to ready to deploy. So one of the things I mentioned was that we're going to use ready to deploy to determine when we're going to deploy to production. Now, the way that I'm going to do that is by creating something that I just call epics. And there may be a built in feature for this, but here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to switch over to a table view and I'm going to create a new field and we're going to call it epic. And then it's going to be a single select. And here's where I'm going to list all of the different um, trigger points to do our deploy. And I'm actually going to number these so that they're easier to identify the right order. Our first one is going to be project setup. This is where we build all of the like initial framework and bootstrap our application and get it ready for a developer to start writing code. After that, we're going to add our user navigation features to the application. Then we will add our number three basic skills and by skills that's actually specific to the application as far as what technical skills you have. Our fourth epic is going to be open the beta to the waitlist. So if you signed up for the waitlist, this will be where you get your official invitation. Then we're going to have skills governance. followed by verification, where we verify the skills for our users. And then the last one will be our contact implementation, where we make it possible for users to contact each other within the platform. So that's seven different epics, which is quite a lot. One thing to be uh, mindful of is after this one open the beta to the waitlist everything downstream of that is subject to change right because there's a saying um, no plan survives contact with the enemy that's what we'll see here so i think if i click the save button here that's going to show up i'm going to drag this over here because i like it in that format so let's set these up bootstrap is going to be project setup seed data that one's actually in, yeah, that's in project setup two. Our API endpoints for search is in user navigation. And now take a look at this. This is on the UI repo. So that was for the API repo. UI repo is going to have some similar features. Project setup, add search from the home page is under user navigation and deploy staging environment to AWS is going to be at the end of user navigation because that will be our first deployment. We have all of our tickets created here. As you can see, everything's pretty much in the backlog, but they are broken down by Epic. We've got the stuff to, you know, create career tracks to mint skill NFTs, um, display the health and XP for a particular skill, expire a skill, due to health, all that kind of stuff. Let's switch back over to our board view now and take a look at what we've got going on here. As you can see, the, um, the Epic tag shows up here. So this one is for Epic number two, user navigation. So that belongs back over in the backlog, but we will drag out everything into to-do from our project setup Epic because that's the stuff we're going to be working on. 
grab that one. And that looks like it. So you can see here that um, in some instances, it does look like there's duplicate tickets. Like we've got add pull request ticket for the API and add a pull request template for the UI. Those are separate repositories. So it's separate steps. So they are separate issues. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and knock a couple of these out. So we'll grab this first one on the API, add the pull request template to the API repo. To do that, we can go over to the repo itself, take a look at our code. So the way we're gonna add our pull request template is right here from the GitHub UI, add a file, create new file. I'm gonna put it in the .github folder, which that's just a personal preference. Like there's, you can pretty much put it anywhere. I like to put it in .github because we're gonna have some other stuff in there and it just kind of keeps it clean as to what the file's for, who wants it, why it's there, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna name it pull underscore request template.md. And then through the magic of the internet, we'll type all of that in. And so my template here just has a few prompts for future Will because he tends to screw stuff up. So we're trying to hook him up right now, mainly around this checklist, just to make sure that I don't forget to add logging where it's appropriate, make sure I don't forget to do tests. Monitoring and metrics are key to any application. So we've got a little checkbox here. Um, API documentation, we'll do swagger docs for our API endpoints here, make sure that gets updated. A lot of times you need seed data in order for other developers on your team to be able to use the features. And then finally, the infrastructure code for managing the um, like the Docker containers or dependencies or different things like that that we're going to use in AWS to run this application. So we'll scroll down here. We're going to commit directly to main branch, and this is going to be the last time we're allowed to do that. I'll show you that next. We'll commit that file. So now when we go to our application root here, there's our GitHub folder, there's our pull request template. And to show you how that works, I can actually click on edit here and uh, we'll make some uh, changes here, blah, blah, blah. We'll create a new branch for that, propose those changes. That's gonna go ahead and open up a pull request for me. And in my pull request, look at that, there is the template that we just created. So now anyone opening up a pull request is going to automatically see this text and be prompted for the default information that we want. So we don't actually want to do that pull request, but uh, you get the idea. So moving back over to our board, we can now drag this from in progress over to ready to deploy. And then the next thing we'll do is protect our main branch. I just said the last, that's gonna be the last commit that we're allowed to make there. So we're gonna go into our settings for the repo. So we'll go into our branches and we're gonna add a branch protection rule. So the name pattern is gonna be main and we're gonna set that up, require a pull request before merging, require approvals, and then also require status checks to pass before merging, which we don't have any, but we'll be adding those. And then one thing I'm not gonna check here is include administrators. This will force administrators to go through the pull request review process as well. The only reason I'm not turning that on is because right now I'm the only person working on this repo. So if I checked that, I could open pull request, but I couldn't merge my own pull request, which, you know, would probably limit our ability to move forward in this application. So we'll confirm that, get my security key in here. So that's all set up. So we can move that over to ready to deploy. And then we need to do the same thing with our UI branch, but you just saw how to do that and uh, I don't think you need to watch me do that again. All right, so that's our basic project set up and I'm now ready to start writing some code. If you wanna see how like this ties into DevOps as an engineering practice, 
Be sure and check out the DevOps roadmap at devops4developers.io forward slash roadmap. And it's choose your own adventure guide. It shows you how all these different pieces of DevOps relate to each other. If you're interested in the application we're building here, specifically Trustified, go ahead and head over to trustified.io. You'll get a lot of info about the product that I'm building. I promise you it's going to change the way that you apply for jobs and how you get hired for jobs. And if you sign up on the uh, email list there, it'll put you on the wait list. So whenever I deploy this out and start beta testing it and refining all the features, you'll be one of the first ones to get access to it. So check that out as well. And then also subscribe to the channel because we've got obviously a lot of work to do here. And by watching the videos, you're going to see exactly how a real application gets built using DevOps practices. And I'm not going to hold anything back. You're going to see, you know, you've already seen the project management stuff. Uh, you're going to see the code that I write. You're going to see how I implement DevOps principles or DevOps practices to make development workflow easier. I'm also going to cover some stuff like the financials on how much it costs to run this application in AWS and the revenue model for it, as well as marketing, SEO, and all of that kind of stuff too that you may find interesting. So be sure and subscribe to the channel. Sign up for the wait list because I'll be sending some stuff out via emails there that I don't put in a video. And um, by the way, it's low. It'll be like a low threshold email list, like one email tops. I'm not going to spam you every couple of hours because you don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. We don't have time for anything except to get to writing some code. So uh, thanks and I'll see you in the next video.